Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here for a few minutes just to talk about some of the new and alternative data sources that can be used to fight fraud. And these might be some data sources that you haven't thought about before. So hopefully I'll open your eyes to a different ways of, of combating fraud and protecting your organizations. Now, the first question you probably have for me is, why is my company called Honey Badger? Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a honey badger, but they're actually very fierce animals. Um, they can fight much larger animals, and they have uh, you know, great stamina. Um, they don't give up, and they, they keep on fighting until the end, and they usually survive. And as a company, we help people fight against fraud. So we have that ethos. The way we see it, if you're going to have any animal on your side fighting on your behalf to try and stop fraud, then the honey badger is really the animal that you want by your side. So that's, that's why we, we are called the, the honey badger. Plus, it's kind of cute as well when it's not in, in a fight. So we like that about it as well. Now, to help you understand the role of honey badger, the technology in invoice finance, I want to outline some of the challenges that we see today in the invoice finance sector. And the way I'm going to do that is to use an analogy as if we're playing chess. Now, who here knows how to play chess? A few people, lots of people. I thought there'd be a, a number of people. So you can imagine that as an organization, uh, this is our chessboard, and your business is the king. So you're on the chessboard there, and that, of course, is your company, your business, your money. It's what you're trying to protect, and it's what we care most about. On the other side of that chessboard, we have bad actors. We have somebody who wants to come on along and commit fraud and extract money from your organization at your expense. So it's not a good situation to be in. Now, the way we go about traditionally fighting against that, and I'm sure many of you do this today, you have measures and processes in place to protect your business and your money. So in this case, we've got a rook, a knight, a king, they're very high value pieces. If you're familiar with chess, these are the pieces that you don't want to lose. They're very powerful when used correctly, but actually they're not that great in terms of flexibility. So what we find when we're using pieces like this to protect our businesses, these are things like credit bureau checks. They're manually speaking to people. They're doing all sorts of manual processes to stop fraud and to do due diligence. And the challenge is, is that these pieces don't scale. They cost a lot of money, and we don't want to risk using them in every situation. On the other end of the chessboard, we don't just have one bad actor. We have many bad actors. Some are more sophisticated. Some are big businesses. Some have call centers. Some have uh, do this professionally. Others take chances. They're smaller people submitting finances, trying their luck. So you have a situation where you've got your business, some controls, and then bad actors trying to take advantage of you. And this setup here is what most invoice finance organizations have today. And if you play chess, you're probably thinking, well, where are the pawns that protect my back row? And that is the problem. Many organizations don't use pawns to protect their business. They only use expensive, high-value pieces to try and combat fraud. So this is where Honey Badger comes in. We act as that kind of first line of defense. We bring together lots of different new and alternative data sources into your defense line so you can use them very cost-effectively, very fast, very flexible. And those of you that play chess, you know that you want to use your pawns first. You want to use to defend. And actually, when you combine pawns together in a row or in a, in a uh, formation, it's actually a very powerful tool. Although those individual pieces alone, one pawn isn't going to change anything, a row of pawns absolutely can. So that's the role Honey Badger plays. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what are these pawns? What are the data sources? What, what can we actually do with these? And I want to give an example of some of the data sources to consider. Imagine you've got a new customer 
and you're onboarding that customer. Well, you may think straight away, let's go to the bureau, let's do a credit check, let's look at the business. Well, actually, before we even get to that point, we can actually look at the email address and we can see what's the reputation, what social profiles does that email have? Do they have a LinkedIn? Does that LinkedIn account use stock imagery? Um, do they have PayPal? Do they have Skype? Do they have Binance? There's hundreds of data points we can look at and give you a score on that email address alone to say, hey, this is a good or a bad person. We can go further and we can go to the mobile networks. So we can take a phone number and we can say, whose identity is this registered against? So we can very quickly do an identity check to see, is this person who we think they are? Is the phone number suspicious? Are they overseas? Is call forwarding set up? These are all kind of tactics and tricks that fraudsters will use to kind of trick you. We may even look at the company website. We'll look and we'll see, are there spy mistakes? Is it GDPR compliant? Does it have a privacy policy? Sometimes businesses will spoof or fraudsters will spoof businesses and they'll set up websites that look similar but are actually quite different when you inspect manually. So we automate, we look at this type of content and we use these pawns to actually detect, okay, is there risk? Because what we want to do is find those bad actors before you get to your more expensive, your more traditional defenses that you, that you have available to you. Now, of course, you can bring in with Honey Badger traditional data sources, PEP, sanctions, your credit bureau ratings, your company registers, uh, and your open source intelligence, company reviews and stuff. But these alone are even stronger when you combine it with some of these alternative or new data sources that, that I've mentioned here. So the benefit of this is when you do onboard somebody, you can instantly get a risk score. So you can tell, is it good? Is it kind of medium or is it high risk? So you know who to flag, who to look into more deeply and who you can push straight through your platform and onboard more quickly to be more competitive. And we run thousands and thousands of checks per day on behalf of invoice finance uh, companies. And some of the results that we see are a 48% reduction in onboarding costs. Sometimes when you're onboarding people, it can take 25, 30 minutes of investigation. Imagine having that instantly at your fingertips. We see a 30% uplift in the detection of bad actors. That means we detect more bad actors, less kind of get through the net, so we're, we're more effective. And we get more data points. When we talk about machine learning and AI, data is important, and in the fraud space as well, Having more data means better decisions. So having 25 times more data points makes us more effective at stopping and decisioning on fraudsters. What we do then as an organization is provide a risk score builder. So a scorecard that you can set and tweak and define different rules. You can have different thresholds depending on the, the risk tolerance. And then you can also get a report to see um, levels of compliance what the outcome was, uh, was it high, was it medium, which rules were triggered. And that's what we're, we're all about. Um, that's Honey Badger. Um, hopefully that kind of 10 minute introduction gives you kind of something to think about. And I hope that we can go away from this thinking about new and different data sources that we could all use to help stop fraud. <laughs>